Yes, if you've got unwelcome garden guests eating your basil for breakfast or lunching on your lilies, help is on the way. We have asked Calgary Horticultural Society's Kath Smythe to stop by, give us the dirt on some of the culprits as well as how you can send those garden pests packing. And we're talking about the creepy crawlies and the little things. And the little thingies. That cause such havoc, right? Well, they are. They're causing some major havoc. I mean, particularly the Cotone Aster. Okay, so we're going to start with that. Let's bring up uh, an image of what this is. Cotone Aster. And this is scale. This is oyster shell scale. And what happens is that it gets onto the branches of the Cotone Aster. And I'm sure if you've driven through some neighborhoods, you've mm. seen the hedges going a dark red in color, and then all of a sudden they just lose their foliage. It literally is an insect with a hard shell, mm -hmm. and it sucks the juice right out of the Cotone Aster. Okay, so how do we remedy this situation? Most people now, I've been getting them to cut their hedges right to the ground. There is a oh, wow. product called Horticultural oil or dormant oil spray kit and you do it in the spring and in the fall before the leaves emerge and it should control it. My neighbor cut hers back and it's coming back beautifully. Okay, so that is a solution for yes. that. Um, another uh, ubiquitous little creature, the red lily beetle. Oh, now this Whoa. is, this guy is <laughs> a plague. There is no known chemical cure. They are, however, introducing a predator wasp and they've had a great deal of success with it in Edmonton and so now Dr. Fry from Olds College is introducing it into parts of Calgary. Yeah. The only cure right now is to pick them off but the thing is these guys can devour an entire lily plant within an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you don't have any of that here? No, okay. I, I wouldn't carry that around. Really? It's, you know. it's that bad. Okay, <laughs> no. the leaf miner, I, I remember this uh, from last year. Yeah, and we're not having it as bad as we used to. They're a small fly and they lay their eggs into the leaves as they're emerging and then they, the larvae chew their way up. There is no known chemical cure, oh. but with good fall care, water, 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 and then in the springtime watching it, but we now have a predator for it. So we are seeing less and less and less of it. Uh, the next one, my daughter would be dismayed to hear that we want to get rid of them because this is a ladybug larva. Yes, this is like putting a 14-year-old in front of your refrigerator when you just buy groceries, <laughs> and he will eat. He will eat at least a thousand aphids every day. He's the best part of the ladybug population. When you buy ladybugs and you put them in your oh, garden. Oh, so we like this guy. Oh, this is the best oh, guy good. going. Okay. This, and you can tell it's a beetle larva because <laughs> it has six legs. Okay. And they are the best. They look like little alligators. And they're very, very, very hungry. Okay, so if you have an aphid problem. Ladybugs, but don't throw them up in the air. Because remember that poem, ladybug, ladybug, fly away home? Right. You want to lay them into your gravel or into your leaves, and they will do their job. Okay, the next one, Kath, the cottony psyllid. Yes. Now, basically, cottony psyllids are all over our ash and our elm, and I did bring some with me today. And what happens with the tree is that the tree itself tries to protect itself, so it curls mm, the leaves right. in. And they're related to a teeny tiny grasshopper. Is that the one up there? Yeah, this yeah. These here? are part of it, and then there there's go. one right up front. Okay. And that's what the trees are doing. The city of Calgary is endeavoring to wash our trees down and hose them down. We, too, can do that. We can go out there and hose the heck out of them, and then we won't get a second generation. Uh, the next thing, Kath, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> what is it? Tele 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 gall. Tele Oops, gall. We're, back. we're still in cotton oh, cellars. Oh, that's awful. Though. Isn't that okay. awful? They, that's what they do on the inside. That, there's Tele gall. Oh. Remember when you were a kid and you used to get this jelly thing and you could throw it on the wall and then it would come down? That's yes. what it looks like on your juniper. What? I, that, <laughs> well, that's a thing? Yeah, that's a thing on your juniper. And then what happens is it turns into a hard brown gall. Oh. And gradually it cuts off the circulation to the top part of the juniper. So you have to prune them out. And when you see that jelly, don't pl spread it around. If you touch it, it's full of spores and it'll spread. So this is... This is plant matter, not This is this plant, plant matter. matter. This is vegetative, matter. yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, you're um, <laughs> Aphids next. You want to talk about aphids? aphids? Well, aphids are come in all colors, and they come in brown and green. This is, believe it or not, a high bush cranberry, and it has bark aphid. Now, bark aphid are these little tiny black guys. Right. And they go along, and as you can see, they suck the life out of the bark. Oh, yeah. 
and they gradually just destroy it. But what you find is that when the plant has aphids, they secrete a honeydew and the leaves become shiny and they ooze it off of there. So then not only have you got aphids, you have ants because ants come for it. This is fun. So then what yeah. do you do? <laughs> So, so are we dealing with a ladybug still? Well, ladybug you can larva? have a ladybug larva. The reason I don't want to recommend a whole bunch of chemicals is because I want to preserve some of the natural predators. However, with this guy, I personally would get some trounce and mix it up and spray it on. Okay, because yes. it's that serious. Yes, and that's serious. But not least, we have to move quickly. Spruce galls, something or other. Adelgan. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what happens to your spruce, and it makes these brown casings off of your new buds mm. and right now they're starting to appear and if you look along the branches of a spruce you'll see little white fuzzy things coming along and they will all of a sudden just appear and then they'll eat their way through the new growth and you can see it started see right. it started and there's still a growth tip but what you do is you prune off the old stuff because they'll overwinter in the ground and these are their egg casings and when you snap them open you'll find white crawlies. <sighs> Thank goodness you can help us with these things. Also want to let you know uh, about a, uh, an event with the Horticultural Society. Attracting Butterflies to Your Garden is happening Saturday, June 27th from 9.30 to noon. More information at breakfasttelevision.ca. Thank you for this. I You're have to, welcome. I have to regroup, Dave. It's your